hello there so it's another day for another video in today's video i want to show you how i created the balls that i used for these flyers using photoshop and trust me it's not that hard but i'm still gonna give it to you also in this video i'm going to give out the psd file for free it will be in the description of this video just click and assess it for those of you that don't want to stress yourself learning how it was made you can just assess it directly from the description if you are just finding my channel for the first time you're welcome and you just found a good mind don't hesitate to subscribe like comment and share because that's the only way youtube is going to recommend the videos to other creators like you who might be wanting to know how the ball was made so without wasting much time let's cut straight to it all right so guys i'm going to show you how i created this um this ball with photoshop yeah i'm going to make this design with a square canvas i'll just hit ctrl n create the canvas so i'm using 2000 by 2000 i don't usually use it in it i don't know why but this is what i'm kind of used to so i'm going to use 2000 by 2000 i'm just going to name it ball or oh, obviously i'm making a ball so it's a white background i'm just going to hit create so yeah this is what it looks like i was supposed to use an ad board but nothing is actually wrong with the ad board this is what it looks like and i'm going to start working on it the first thing i'm going to need to create is a shape so i'll i'll hit u then i'll hold shift and drag to create an exact square shape so however the square is i just want to make sure it's a square that has equal sides so then I hit V to activate the move tool. Then I align this to the middle. And kind of one of the advantages of using an output. So now that it's at the middle, I'll just hit U. And then yeah, I'll hit U. Select the shape tool. And then I drag here, like on the points here at the end of the shape to increase the radius. I'm just going to drag till it's a complete circle. Although you can just create a circle yourself, you can just import a circle instead of using this method. But I just feel like this is the way I create my own circles. Then I hit V to activate the, the move tool. But before I do that, I select a fill for this. I select a fill for the shape. What I'm going to use is a gradient fill here. I'm going to use whichever color. I just want to use, um, let's say I want to use orange. So here I'm just going to put my brand color FF5700. And that's it. Then I hit enter. Then on the other side, I'm still going to input an orange. Although it's just that this other orange have to be darker. So FF5700. And then when it shows, I'm going to like bring it down, turn it down a bit to make it darker. I think something about this. Yeah, I think this is cool. But nothing would be wrong if I turn down. Nah, this is perfect. So I just hit OK. And then I should have something like this. Although you can create your ball like this, but I don't like my ball being just a smooth ball that everyone will know that it will create the shape. So I'm going to like add texture to it. But before that, I'll remove the stroke. Any outline that's here, I'm just going to reduce it to zero. It's entirely. So yeah, this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to turn, I'm going to add texture to this. I'll go to filter. Then I'll go to filter gallery. Then I'll convert to a smart object so I can always edit. Do not rasterize, just convert to a smart object. And then I'll hit green. Yeah, just this green. Use the settings on the screen. That's 23 and the intensity and 50. The green type is going to be soft, but I don't want it to be too obvious. 
So we can then increase the intensity to 30. Then hit OK. So we should have something that's not too rough, but a little bit smaller than the original. So you can then create a color layer here at the top. So you can edit to any color of your choice. But not really necessary though. But if you want to be using it over and over, I want to make it editable and just create a color layer here. Let's, um, let's make it red. Whichever color that you want to use, and then you switch the, the blend mode to color, and then you create the clipping mask. So this way, whichever color you want to use, you just double click here on the color. And then you can just adjust it to whichever color you want to use instead of doing the gradients all over well i'm not going to be using this so i'm just going to hide the layer all right then now what i'm going to do is to add my logo here so i'll drag and drop my logo i'm just going to use my normal brand logo i'm just going to drag and drop Depending on how you want it, you can make it glow, you can just leave it to be normal. And hold out and drag to it. Then turn. Yeah, like this, then I'm going to kind of reduce the opacity to 50 because I don't want it to be too obvious. So maybe 75, just something that's not too obvious. It's yeah, something like this, it's fine, it's fine. So 90 or 88, it's no big difference hit enter and then when you have something like this you then you can make it go like i said just add effect but well, i'm not going to be doing that here you then select all three layers and convert to a smart object put shift to select all three layers and you right click and convert to smart object yeah now it's a smart object meaning it's just like one element you can just drag however you want it don't you see i don't i just i'm just showing you so now what, what we're going to do here is first of all add an effect to this so we double click on this layer which you can always rename we double click on it and then we're going to add emboss because i want it to look more realistic so the emboss will increase the depth and then we increase the size to maximum so maybe we can reduce the depth a bit to about 100 yeah something like this if you look at it now it's looking a bit circular then we can increase the opacity of the highlights mode yeah then hit okay now we are going to add a bubble to make it look more realistic like more realistic so we'll drag and drop our bubble I have three kinds here i'm going to upload all of them in the description of this video but i will just i'm just going to use this one drag and drop. then you hold out and then you drag 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 when you are okay then you, you release and then you hit enter all right you look at it well now you're going to see that it's already forming the ball shape but the bubble is kind of too obvious what i'm going to do is reduce the fill to 50 percent because i don't want it to be too obvious it's kind of okay so here i'll select both elements and then convert to a smart object convert to a smart object now it is a smart object so yeah this is the ball you can then import, import it in your design although to make it more realistic you can still add an embossed effect to this one just double click and then open bevel and emboss enable it i want it to be visible while we edit it so you will soften and then you can either increase the depth or reduce depending on how you want your ball to look then you hit okay and if you like you can also add shadow to make it look like it's standing on something 
So I will just do that. I'm just I'm just creating a rough shadow. To do that, just add a new a, a new layer, blank layer. It's B. That's brush. Increase your size to like 200 or something, depending on the size of the canvas that you use. Something like this. Then the opacity should be at 100. And then you, I think this is too small. Increase this brush further. Like I said, depending on the size of the canvas you're using. So I'm just gonna brush over it. So I to create a shadow. Although this shadow is not really realistic. Like I said I'm just creating. Just want, to be, just want it to be like this so I can just blur it out filter blur Gaussian blur and ok 25 look set this on the screen and just move it down a bit and that's it so this is it with the shadow so if you just want to edit it if you want to edit it anytime you want to change the logo you want to change the color what you have to do is double click on this smart object here and it's going to open the previous smart object that's this one then you double click on this other smart object and you can edit anything that you want to edit from here let's say we wanted to change the color we just unhide this layer and see it's red I wanted it to be pink I'll just double click on the color layer and then select pink or purple wherever whichever I wanted so even if it was blue or maybe you see it's blue it changed maybe green or something whichever I wanted it's just easy for me to do so if I wanted it to be green I'll just change it here and control s control s is gonna change whenever I change the logo don't forget to hide the previous logo it's going to change and We'll wait for it to update. Although it may take some time depending on your laptop speed. If you go to this previous, you see you're going to see that it has changed here. It's still it's now green, so control S here also. And once this has saved, you will go to the final one and you see. That everything has changed. Like I said, it all depends on the speed of your laptop. Now I'm going to go to the third part. This is the final one, the shadow. I'm going to see it's now green. So this is what it looks like. On that design design, I'll just drag and drop on the design. You see. Going to, it's going to look like this. I just removed it from the artwork. Let me know if you are going to be trying this and if you have any suggestions or any questions about design or anything, just ask in the comment section and by God's grace, I'm going to be attending to it in the next video. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. Thank you.